This is Code.org. I'm currently working on CS Discoveries, their physical computing unit, and I'm on the lesson Getting Properties. Let's see. Using the Circuit Playground, and I have my Circuit Playground Express right here. Here's the sample code you saw in the last level, but this time there's another drop-down menu to control the buzzer. Ooh, that's cool. You'll have to add the code to make it work. Do this. Using the LED code as a model, add new code inside the button L event that will play a long or short buzz according to the chosen value property of buzzer underscore input. And that's the ID of this buzzer. And that's the ID of this buzzer menu. Okay. Add new code that will turn off the buzzer when the right button is pressed. Hint. The event is already in the code. Right. So we don't need to add the uh, L button press or R button press. We already have that. Okay. So on the event that the L button is pressed, we're going to leave all that stuff that does the light. But what else now? Well, we want to check if it is. Let's see what our options are. We got long buzz or short buzz. So we want to check if it, just like we did here, LED type, okay? But now we're going to need a variable for this. So I'm going to steal their idea and use buzz type for my variable name, okay? I guess I could call it buzz if I wanted, but buzz type it is. It's a better variable name because it explains uh in detail what it represents and what is it going to represent well we need to grab the get property okay and just like up here the led input what is this one and the id of this one is buzzer underscore input so hey computer get the property buzzer underscore oop, nope buzzer underscore input now once you grab that property what do i want to get from it i want to get from it its value so it's going to, the computer's going to say, get property, oh, okay, buzzer underscore input, got it. Now what? Oh, the value, here. And it returns that. So now our variable would be equal to, if it was like this, it'd be equal to short buzz. Because what we say is we're going to create this new variable, go get the buzzer input, grab its value, and return it. And now buzz type equals short buzz in this case. Then we want to check, right? We want to know what it's equaling, because we want to do something if it is so here's our math equality operator and remember two equal sign is comparing something right so one equal sign you create a variable two you're comparing so we want to know if buzz type and i already looked right in quotes it was short space you got to get it exact buzz in quotes so if it's equal to that what do we want to do now, it's odd to me that they're using an if. I guess I get it. You can do that. Did we have? They have an else. Okay. Um, we can do that. It works just fine. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it a bit more tricky, but else. So else if. So if buzz type equals short buzz, do this. Else. So if it does not equal the short buzz, what do I want it to do? I want to check for buzz type equal to long buzz. And remember, variable names don't have to be in quotes, but this does because this is the value that we're getting from over here, not a variable name. Short, well, that is going to be similar to what's over here. It's not directly from there. Uh, the difference between if and else, every time this runs, the computer is going to check if this equals blink, and if it does, it will blink. But even if it does equal blink, it then immediately checks if it equals pulse, which is fine. If it equals blink, it won't equal pulse. But when you get to be large scale programs, that's a waste of time for the computer. If this is already equal to blink, we know it's not equal to pulse. And so even though this runs great and is correct, um, if we did an else if, then it would only check the second part, else if, not an else, an else runs always and automatically. Now with an else if, it's only going to check this if, if this is false. So if this is false, if it's not short buzz, then it will check, ooh, I wanted this to be long buzz, if this is long buzz. Because if it is short buzz, it will just run the code that we put in here and skip the rest of this. If it is not short buzz, it will skip the code in here, check if it's long buzz and if so then it runs the code in here and if it's neither it doesn't run any of this if we had an else statement not an else if just an else it would run that code but we don't so it just skips all that code 
All right, now what do we want to do? We're going to do a circuit express. Aha, and we want to use buzzer frequency like we did earlier. Now, what do we want to do? Um, we're going to control how long it is. So for the short buzz, I'm going to say, and we learned earlier, this controls the length. And for the long buzz, I'm going to say 1,000. Um, I'll leave the frequencies the same for now. And then finally, over here, or down here, button, we want to turn off buzzer stop when the right button's pressed. Okay. Let's give this a shot. So now I'm going to hit the butt, left button. Okay, now let's hit the left button. Okay, now, you see it stopped it? Here, I'll prove it by making this even longer. I better stop it, otherwise that's going to be forever. I got to hit reset to run again and run. Long. Let's do a pulse, too. But uh that is way, way too long. Anyways. Bye. Ha ha ha. Alright. Um, awesome. And of course we can mess with the uh how long, how short, the frequency, and all of that. Great. I'm gonna well keep going.